Hey everybody, it's Stu Smith and Jeff Nichols here with Tactical Fitness Report, and we are continuing our discussion on injury, injury prevention, recovery, but we're going to break it up into three different segments. So this is part one, I guess you could say. We're going to break it up into three parts where we're going to take, you know, your activities before the workout, what you do during the workout and after the workout, and how... We're going to break each of those down to a point where we're really focusing on everything that you do can help you with preventing injury and speed up the recovery process. Because that's really what we're doing. When we talk about injury prevention, we're really talking about recovering to a level to where you're not hurting yourself. Yeah. You know, and you're you mitigating risk. Be, be, yeah. like, we're, we're always going to be pushing ourselves to kind of like walk that line of if I kept pushing, I might certainly get overtrained and it might get might injure myself just we're, we're not talking catastrophic like tear necessarily we're just talking no. like for example perfect example is like my hamstring from last week right yep it, it, it let me know hey man we're pushing a little bit hard now my entire focus has shifted to how do i heal this hamstring as well as maintaining a fairly good tempo of training a, around it or like i mean i, I say i don't avoid it right a good bit of time and <laughs> here's the segue I spend a real, a fair amount of time stretching, working on mobility, like real working on mobility. When I say mobility, I'm talking like putting myself into, into position, getting into position, coming out of positions that I have to be in and for sport, right? Getting into a deep squat and holding that isometrically, right? Getting yep. my hips, keeping my hips mobile. You know, I may, I'm not even specifically targeting my hamstring and stretching. I'm stretching everything else around it. And in, in, in proxy, the hamstring is getting some stretching as well. Right. So um, instead of a static stretch, you're talking yeah. about a dynamic stretch, you know, yeah, or even stretch. like a, just think yeah. of like a, think of a lunge. I'm, but yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to step, put my front foot up on like a, you know, five to six inch block and then just get down in that split squat, yep. which my legs slowly. And then I'm, I'm actually working on descent, that deceleration. So it's not so dynamic. It does get there because I then do the split squat jumps too. Yeah, there thing. you go. It turns into dynamic, dynamic movement. But yep. I, I just speed everything up uh, from that standpoint, and I do a lot of rotation work. I still focus on my my lumbar spine a lot, and then and then shoulders. So I just I my head is I work from the ground up. Yeah, that's, that's a good I, one. So this is I, your basically your warm up before you know you go into an activity where. You're listening to your body because sure. your body was talking to you last week, but you're still working around it. So yeah. that's really kind of what we're talking about today. Cause what that is, you know, what, what Jeff just mentioned is that's his pre workout ritual, yep. right? Is how he gets warmed up. But it also depends on many different elements, right? It depends on what he's doing that day. You know, yep. if he's not doing the, the track workout, he may not do that. You know, for sure. warm, maybe something else. If I may just go for a walk, honestly, like today, because it's so hot outside. It's nice. Today's not a track workout. Today is, uh, is, is actually is going to be a leg workout for me. And because it's so hot, I'm going to put on my sunglasses, you know, <laughs> get some water, and I'm going to do probably a half mile walk before I train. Right. There you go. And, and then you get into the lift. and go right into it. Kind right? of warm right up into yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. So, so like I said, so let's think about this. Um Here's some things that you have to do whenever you are preparing for your next workout, right? So let's let's talk about the planning phase, right? Because yep. we are planning to do a workout every day at six a.m. I have I am leaving the house and going to this workout, and I have a bag has all my stuff in it. It's got from cleaning supplies, you know, shampoo and soaps, and uh, I got this. Uh, little magnesium rub yep. that I really like, especially after a shower, um, because it is so freaking hot. And the reason why I've been using that, if I'm wringing out my shirt at the end of a workout, I know that I have just lost a ton of electrolytes, sodium yep. primarily, but magnesium, you know, potassium, all that too. And it's just a good way to get it to the, to the body. But I'm also, you know, I am planning if I'm going on a run, we're, we typically run on this trail where if we go two miles down, we're going to turn around and come two miles back. Typically along that half halfway mark, I am planning to drop a bottle of water. 
Now inside that bottle of water is some drip drop electrolyte, basically sodium, you know, flavored sodium that goes into this water bottle. Drop it right there because I know when I come back, it always sucks about three miles into that thing and I'm needing some water. I'm drenched, you know, from head to toe, just from sweating. Yep. It's so freaking humid. I was, I was hurting today, uh, actually. And, uh, I planned everything accordingly. Um, and the only thing that really helped me was when I got to the pool, I just treaded water for 10 minutes and, uh, actually got my body temperature down, um, because, yeah. I swear half of fatigue is body heat. You know, if I yeah, get my yeah. body oh, heat. Yeah. Down, that's, that's a, that's a, I mean, it, we are really lucky creatures because if you look at a dog or other animals, they get really, really hot. Right. They have to slow down. I yes. really do. And for us, us being able to sweat is an indicator, but we also don't want to ignore it and take it for granted. Right. Like, Oh, yeah. sweat, I'll be, I'll, I'll be fine. Right. Eventually you run out of sweat. Or you get so hot, you stop sweating, which makes like yeah. people like that makes no damn sense. Yeah. That happened to me in, in, in selection. Oh, it's awful. In Arizona. We, it was August. And yeah. after jumping all morning, it was about noon. And we did a 10 mile run in, in, in Tucson in August. Yep. That nice. was, and it had to be at a pace. Like it was a fast, I mean, it, it, it was a no shitter, man. Like that, that was the second hardest run we did. Yep. That was. Yeah. So mm. again, it's, it's one of those things, folks, that, you know, some of you may be listening to this and go, yeah, no duh. <laughs> right. Yeah, but you, the but, day you forget. Yeah. But also it's one of those things that was, there's probably a fair amount of people going like, like, this isn't valuable information. If you don't think that these little things are valuable, then you are going to end up broken and old. That's where you're both, not just old. Like we're going to end up old, but I ain't going to end up broken. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I tell you what, the, the problem is, I mean, there's days that I'm like, oh, I forgot my water bottle. But you know what? My run sucked that day. You know, the back half of that run just started falling garbage. apart. And it yeah. wasn't a, a psychological thing. I was done. I mean, I had to like slow down. I had to walk. Luckily, there's a water fountain about another, you know, half a mile, you know, in there. And I was able to drink some water, but still not yeah. electrolytes, which – is a big difference, you know, just yeah, yeah. last thing you want to do is just drink pure water, you yeah. know, when you're sweating that. Cause it actually can get a little bit dangerous. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. So just know like, it, it, you know, if, if Stu is running and his group are running 10, 12, 15 miles at that heat, mm, mm. it becomes dangerous. Why it's called uh, hyponutremia. Yeah. When you sweat out a lot of your electrolytes and you drink water, which again, it's one of those things like, I'm not saying don't drink water. When you drink a lot of water in those environments where you've depleted a lot of sodium potassium, what happens is, is you, you drink a bunch of water that has no electrolytes in it, and then it flushes your system even more through urination. Yep. Um, and then, but also because it, it sees water, right? Your cells feel the water, so they, they suck it up like a sponge and they volumize, right? The cells do the, and there's no sodium to hold, right? Yeah. So your yeah. body actually, the, the neuro the, the neuro connection between muscle and brain that uses sodium potassium as a highway with the yep. water it, it can't transfer that signal so your body starts shutting systems down like vital systems down like respiration but first one yeah. it starts shutting down is your heart yeah. because your heart works off of um, well, cas yeah. calcium yeah. and other yeah. electrolytes and such for for eating so it's a serious thing now it buds and other selection courses, the likelihood of you encountering that are slim to none because the medical staff is so on top of it. But again, just leading a conversation that Stu and I've had the last couple of days is, is what happens before your training program matters as much as the training program. It does. Oh, absolutely. That like preparation we, 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 yeah. is key. I mean, we talk about the warm up and stretch. Obviously, we're not going to go into depth with you know all the different protocols that right. you can do to warm up and stretch. Find one that works for you. Yeah. I personally, you know, I hate burpees, but I tell you what, I don't know what happened, but one day I just discovered if I do this little burpee pyramid where we, we go on this basketball court and I do one burpee, run to the other side and, you know, butt kickers, Frankensteins, yeah. you know, all the yeah. little dynamic steps, two burpees on that end, come back three, four, five, get up to 10. After 10, it's no longer a warm up. It, it starts really sucking and turn into a workout, but yeah. top at 10 and you'll see that the blood is flowing. Big time. Yeah. I mean, I am 
fully warm. My upper body's warm. My lower back, no pain in my lower back. Um, you know, legs are warmed up. I'm ready to go do whatever. I can do upper body workout. I can go do a lower body workout. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm ready to roll. It's just something that works for me. I think you got to find out what works for you in that pre phase of of your workout. Yeah. Right. I bet sometimes you probably it's you've probably encountered this. I'm just gonna guess because you've done it so many times that burpee piece is that you go. 10 wasn't enough or it wasn't what I was looking. So I had to do something else. So yeah, the reason why I bring this up is guys, like we talk about stretching and mobility programs kind of in the same breath as we do other programs, understand that saying every single day I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that and just devoid paying attention is a bad idea. So yeah. especially for the long term, right? If you're new to it and you get a general warm up, the likelihood of you creating any issues, negative issues is slim. Right. Cause you just, your body isn't, um, doesn't have that much stress put on it over time and time. But when you've been doing it for a while, it's like, I, when people say, Hey, what's your warm up look like? What's your mobility warm up look like? I, you know, my answer is always, Stu's already said it. What's my activity for that day? What's the velocity of that activity for that day? What's the duration of that activity for the day? What is the primary body parts involved yep. in that activity for the day? And then I focus on those movement patterns associated to that program. Absolutely. And then that, I, once, that's I've a warm up. once I've associated those warm ups initially, then I go, okay, well, what velocity am I having to move these at? So I may not have to move faster because if I'm doing a heavier load, like on a back squat, for example, like if I'm working 70% of 3RM or something, well, I don't, I might not get super dynamic in my warm up. But if I'm doing sprints that day, or if I'm doing a power, explosive power work like Olympic weightlifting, you bet that I'm going to start off slow and my warm up will end at dynamic and then go right into the program. Yep, exactly. So we can't say, Hey, here's a catch all warm up for all the nope. stuff. Now the burpees are really good one in the way that he's doing it because it is total, total body. And what you're also doing with that warm up specifically, it's really, really valuable. And this kind of sounds strange for some maybe, but like, let's say you're working shoulders. Well, I'm just going to work my warm up my shoulders. No, 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 no. What's the one thing that's touching the ground? Your feet. Like, yeah, but I'm seated. Yes, but that's where your power is being derived from your feet. Okay, so get up on your feet. Walk, run, jog, do burpees. Just you, jump rope is a great one. Yep. Get on a bike, right? Use your feet. Yeah, Not that's a really good point because too. that's a really good point because especially if you're doing some power generation in your movements, you know, it starts there. You know, the Achilles calves you know all of those can get really tight and you know you can blow a you can blow any of those doing a, a push press yeah you yeah working shoulders that's you know, how i separated my shoulder yeah but well, you push can do press. that too yeah yeah you know it's like one of those things that um i just i just kind of want everyone to focus on the idea of you know when when we're talking about warming up there isn't a time you don't put a time to it no, you don't yeah. put a rep to it. You don't like, well, I've gone bench press today. I'm going to do a couple sets of 10 with a bar. And then, no, you work your way up, right? You treat yourself like you're injured. Yeah. <laughs> Every yeah. day, treat yourself like you're sick. Every day, take care of yourself. Don't rush. Now, people are going to go throw their hand up right now if we're in a crowd and they'd be like, Stu and Jeff, but I work a swing shift and I've got all this sort of stuff. Well, but most of the time, there's, I have only encountered it once where I had that individual break down their schedule and I was like, well, you got three hours right here. You're just wasting Yeah. in total. <laughs> yeah. Right? Because, because, well, when you woke up, when you went to bed last night, you knew that you had to do this. So you knew you either had to pack a lunch or pick something up. So now you've got to drive across town to Chipotle, grab your stuff and then drive back, which eats up about 45 minutes when you could have planned ahead of time. So a lot of people are like, well, yeah, but I just, uh, Hey man, like that's part of the deal. If you, you, everyone wants to be a superhero. No one wants to go to superhero school though. <laughs> superhero school is do it right. Repeat it. If you hit a wall, figure it out, change it fine. Like, and then that's Stu and I never had a Stu and I can, you know, counterpart to ask these questions 20 years ago. Right. Right. But we, we, you know, we both were very lucky with some very good coaches that, you know, had nothing to do with special ops or anything like that. They were just good athletic coaches that, yeah. you know, help build a foundation that, you know, is very transferable 
to a special ops world. And then, you know, you meet some guys who've kind of been there, done that. You kind of learn from them. Next thing you know, it's, yep. you know, it, you're there and you wind up, ah, I guess I did this right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah but, and so that's why I like looking at the things too, is that just, just stepping back from your daily routine or pro or workout routine will give you most of the answers. If you look ahead and say tomorrow, well, if I'm going to train, it has to be at this time. Well, I got to go to work. It hopefully has to be at a certain time. Around those two events, you need to eat. Around all of those events, you need to sleep. Yeah. Everything else is ancillary except for really kind of one thing. If you're a mom or a dad, sure. then that, ha I'm going to say has to, has to take a priority. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. So you have three to four meals, a, an eight to 10 hour work day, an hour of training, right? Hopefully seven to eight hours of sleep. And then you have mommy and daddy time, which probably is two or three hours. There's enough time in a day to do that. Unless you have some crazy commute or you, you really do work a really odd swing shift type thing that happens like firefighters fair, fair amount. Mm -hmm. But in the military, especially, you know, the, the other side, I guess my last piece is there's a lot of people that are working long day, day labor jobs, construction, whatever it may be. And they're like, Oh, I got to get this training in and they're pooped. Well, that's life. Yeah. And the way that you, the, the best way, the best way truly to work a full day's job and still get training in is don't skip meals. Don't skip sleep. Yeah. That's, that's your prep right that's there. That's a good point. Yeah. If, you know what? yeah. if you're going into a training day and we go, well, I've only had four hours of sleep, although I, but I've got my hydration, got my food. doesn't matter, man. You're not going to perform at a super high level all the time. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point because you almost have to think of all your post workout stuff that you do. That is pre workout for the next day. Yeah. Right. And yeah. all of these things create what you should be doing very similar to what we did in, you know, going through buds, you know, you, you would dirt dive procedures, you know, especially yes. when you're getting ready for pool comp, you know, there's all these procedures that you have to memorize and you just go over them, over them, over them, time in your head. So you just can't get them wrong. Right. You do it so many times, not till you get it right. You do it so many times. So you can't get it wrong. Yeah. Really similar to this whole thinking process when it comes to the, the workout and preparing for a workout, you know, you're going to have all your little procedures. You're going to have, okay, this is the workout I'm doing, right? I have a ha hamstring injury that I got to work around. So I, that's going to require me to warm up longer. Prior to that, you know, here's what I just drank. Here's what I ate, you know, to fuel myself for an early morning workout, right? Or if you're doing it in the afternoon, it may not be that big a deal. But I tell you what, if you're busting ass hard in the morning and you haven't eaten anything in 12, 10, 12 hours, yeah, you know, you're that's, <laughs> that's a low blood sugar workout that doesn't last but about 20 or 30 minutes and you're going to start getting the, dizzy and nauseous. Right. You know, the ketchup, the ketchup you have to play after that. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what this all comes down to folks. Don't put yourself into, in the position to play catch up all the time. Yeah. Right. Life is busy. Life is crazy. We forget stuff. We leave stuff where, where we are oh, like, Stuff comes up, like I gotta drive across town because my, you know, my son got in a fight at school, whatever it is. Like, but, and that's just understand we're not trying to change that. But if you prepare, if you prep uh, the way that Stu is explaining it, you're gonna have far fewer uh, missed training days and you're gonna have far fewer training days that didn't give value rather than just deplete. Right. And like, what is this topic? We're talking about helping yourself prevent injuries prevent injury. Yep. And that, that is really by you preparing properly through the hydration, the electrolytes, the fuel, uh, the warm ups, you know, and the planning for immediate post workout, you know, activities, whether that is a protein shake or, you know, whatever you need for fuel for the next day, yep. you know, figuring it all out, how it mixes into your daily schedule. Because I tell you what, here's one thing that I found over the years that if, if it's not in the schedule, it doesn't really exist, right? You really True. need to, you got to put it in your schedule. Otherwise it's real easy to get dropped. Yep. 
you know, and you, you forget about the, you know, the post protein shake, or you forget about to bring your clothes to the gym to change out. Now you're 30 minutes behind schedule. And, yeah. you know, it's just added stress that just once again, doesn't help you with your recovery. So yeah, all those little it, things and planning can help you with your recovery. And it prop and it's strange because we're, we're talking really, we're talking kind of about compliance, like even self compliance. It's to admittedly like that's why all of my supplements are in one place because mm -hmm. I see them all the time. I don't put them away in cupboards. Now, fortunately, I, I'm single and live at my, by myself aside from my son. So I have a house that's basically most women would probably walk in here and go, this needs a woman's touch. So because I have supplements nice out, but, but, but I know that, like I know that, it, but, but at the same time, it's, it's this, it's where I put myself be, so I can be sure. And cause even, I forget. I've been hitting the head a lot. I forget a fair amount. Set yourself up for success. And the first thing is compliance is be on time, right? Plan, prepare, do everything you can within reason because we're talking about injury, right? Preventative, trying to be the best we can at preventing our own injuries and we're in control of it. Don't rush. Don't rush if you don't have to. That's why Stu and I keep saying, give yourself time. Like the long calendar timeline, but also that finite calendar where you're like, oh, I'm going to get up tomorrow morning and run. Have a plan. Yep. And follow the plan. Easier. Yeah. Then, yep. <laughs> oh, then, then there's that. That's the other <laughs> side of compliance. Then you've got to do it. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. What, so what was think, it we used to say? Plan your dive and dive your, dive plan. your plan. Yeah. So. Cause it, cause inevitably things are going to change. And if, if you were just blindly following your routine, then when you, when something changes, you're like, what do I do? And then you put like for us, like we get questions all the time and someone, someone messaged me yesterday and was like, well, in your program, it says, um, to, to only do concentric on the deadlift on this day's program. And he's like, I can't drop my weights at the gym. What do I do? And I just responded, don't drop the weights. Mm -hmm. What else can you do? Like, yeah, I, are readjust. you either going to not do the exercise or are you going to, well, yeah, but what if it's heavier? Put less weight on the bar. Oh, you can do that? Well, it's either that or don't do the reps. Yeah. Like, I just, you guys got to stop and think and realize that we're trying to get you adapted, okay? And so preventing injury, the best way to prevent injury, one of the best ways to prevent injury is get into a solid reoccurring program that is things you adapt positively or you feel like you're adapting negatively. You can make these simple little shifts to get you back on track. We're not like a week and a half in going, fuck man, like I've been doing your pro cause I got this yesterday. I've been doing your program for, um, for a week and I have a PST in three weeks. What part of your program should I cut out so I can get ready for your PST? And my response was good luck. Yeah. You're in the PST phase. I can no longer help you. Yeah. Cause your cause your mentor is having you do a PST every Tuesday. Right. Game over, man. Good luck. Yeah. But Thanks, you know, you should be, you should also be at such a level where the PST does not interfere with your workout. And that's what I was saying. I, I don't, I don't train feet. I don't stood as well. We don't train feet people for the PST specifically. You're like, oh, wait a minute. Like what? Yeah. We train people for buds in SFAS and Ranger yeah. School and because if you do that right, you don't need to train for the PST. Yeah, the PST a, is PST is definitely part of it, but yeah. it's not all of it. And not the focus. The the goal is to build up that PST score to such a level to where even on a bad day, even on a day, I mean I have guys that go do my workouts from six to eight o'clock and then they said, oh, yeah, I got a PST in uh, another hour and a half. And they go do the PST, and they crush it. Yep. Crazy. No big yeah, deal. That's, Just, and that's because they're training – exactly, because they're training for proper volume. Yeah. They, in fact, I, I loved it. And this is a guy that I love. He's already a, a frogman now. But it, he worked construction all day long. He'd, he'd work out from us. He had to leave early sometimes to get, get to work right? Six, six to eight, he'd work out with us, go do his construction job. Some days he'd be off because he had a PST and he goes, I can't let a PST mess up my workout. Yeah, that right? was when I knew he had it. 
he knew he had it figured out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't let the PST See, ruin your work. <laughs> that's, that's an entire topic that we should. Oh, do. I love it. I love it. Yeah. But anyway, yes. so I know we kind of digressed a little bit, but, you know, it is all about the, the planning. And, and what we just discussed here, you know, you know, most people think of pre-workout preparation as simple as taking some pre-workout and stretching, right? Yeah. Or warming up and stretching. It goes a lot more detail into that, especially if little things pop up. Like right now, it is hot as hell right now. 6 a.m., it's still hot. It's it's 95% humidity. It's super hot. Still, and yeah. I, I, you go for a run, you're like, oh, it's not so bad. And then a mile in, you're completely drenched so, and you you're just start sweating profusely. Yeah. Well, luckily, you know, I – look at my watch or my phone and that says, Oh, by the way, tomorrow morning, 6 AM, 95% humidity, 80 degrees. All right. So I know when I go for a run at 6 AM, I'm going to be sweating my ass off. So yeah. what do I do? I yeah. bring my electrolytes. I bring my uh, water before I go pound a big thing of water, you know, so I am loaded up to go ready to go do this workout and am able to finish the workout. Even though, you know, I've sweat profusely. I've able to. You, have you ever weighed yourself before and after? Oh, absolutely. Six, six, seven pound weight loss. Yeah. 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 Did that yesterday. Yeah. So that's the other thing too, is like just. There's that's a, a real gallon fact. of water. That's almost a gallon of water that yeah. I just. Cause is, it, is a gallon of water 12 pounds or eight? I think it's an eight. Yeah. Eight. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's, so that just, these are all those sort of things that folks, we understand that, you know, Stu and I've been doing this for a long time, I guess almost 20 years, both of us, but, uh, we didn't pick the granted. We didn't pick this stuff up right away. Uh, and no. it, don't, don't mistake us that like we were omnipotent or various. Uh, oh no. All uh, of these things of I'm telling you are from lessons learned yeah. of what I've screwed up. Yes. You know, <laughs> Agreed, yeah. I used to not do that, you know, prepare like uh, that. For a run. And I was like, Oh, just suck <laughs> it up. You know, it's not that far. Next thing I know, the last mile, I'm walking because oh, I'm yeah. just cramping. Up and or almost did this the other day, and I, I did everything right. But it was just super hot, and we swam first instead of running. We did this thing called a swim, run, swim. Yeah. And coming back for that second swim, everything got tight. Hamstrings got tight. I mean, it wasn't a pulled hamstring. It was bilateral muscle cramping yeah, in yeah. my legs. Yeah. And uh, that – completely crushed me i was able to swim for a couple minutes afterwards but i i was a scissor kick away from blowing hamstrings yeah right right yeah, yeah so i was just like okay let's get the rub on let's go electrolyte because i let's go shut hydrate it or shut it down. i weighed myself afterwards and eight pounds less yeah eight pounds less so that was that was awful you know it, it, no that that's guys this training especially this summer this is this these are real things Okay. These really are the heat is an issue. Hydration is an issue. Like we're beating the dead horse a little bit, but sure. you understand that uh, these things wouldn't be constantly talked about if they weren't valuable. Right. And you know, in the fall, I don't have those issues. I don't yeah. need to drop a water Beautiful. bottle fall off. Fall here is amazing. I'm not sweating profusely, you know, in the winter, it's not even humid here. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of arid, a little bit different, yeah. but yeah. it's, it's, it's a little colder, you know? So once again, that's another element that you have to start focusing on. You know, what are you going to wear? Yeah. You know, when, when you do this, you yeah, know, we do have sure. a guy, by the way, <sighs> that makes me feel like such a puss, right? There's this guy, <laughs> he's called the speedo man. And day after day, he runs about six miles in a speedo. Doesn't matter what the weather is. There can be snow on the ground, and this guy's wearing a speedo. Nothing on top, no shirt, speedo, pair of running shoes. Good and, for him. And he does that. And I'm sitting here in my car, waiting for people to pull up into where we meet for running. And uh, you know, he goes jogging by, and I got my gloves on, I got my watch cap on. It's like 34 degrees outside, you know. It's or Wim Hof. It's cool. like Wim Hof's brother. <laughs> I don't know, man, but it was like, oh man, I got to get out now. Yeah. yeah, this guy's making me feel feel bad. But anyway, that guy doesn't have to prepare because that's what he does all the time. But he's prepared his body to handle that's his it. Life, I guess. Man. I mean, it's like what he's he probably, does. He's probably. Be, I bet you. I bet you money, and I mean this respectfully. 
I bet you he was a severe addict of some sort, whether it was drugs, alcohol, or some addict. Cause, and, I, and this is why I'm saying this, is because I am an addict. I am. And a lot of addicts replace something with another so they can still have that addictive outlet. Sure, sure. It's just trying to find an addictive outlet. That's that is, healthy. Right. And so yeah. for me, and that's why Stu and I keep saying like, these are lessons learned in errors because our addictive personality in terms of training is like hair on fire, go. We just kept breaking, kept breaking, yeah. kept breaking. And we learned soon enough because we had good teachers or people we trusted to get in our ear and go, hey, man, you should probably th rethink this. Well, we rethought it soon enough that we're able to be in our 40s and, 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 and still be able to do pretty high workload. Yeah, that's a really good point. So, and like still said, enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Love it. Um, so, that was our pre workout injury prevention recovery discussion. Next, yep. we're going to talk about uh, during the workout because there's a lot of things during the workout that also depends on your preparation. Did you prepare yeah. right? But if you prepare right, there's some things during the workout that may not necessarily be gear or um, products that you're using during the workout, you know, to help be you breathing, move. right? Breathing, breathing is something. Everything right? from breathing can be moving. It can also be knowing your own body, right? Like Jeff is pulling back yeah. on some hamstring issues right now because he knew he pulled his almost pulled yeah. his, his hamstring uh, a week ago. So okay. there's little things that, you know, that you can take into that. And that's what we'll discuss on, on part two of this sure. uh, series. And then, then we'll go on to the back end of the workout and really start nailing down everything you need to do post workout to recover from the workout. But also once again, you got to think of your post workout as your pre workout for the next day. Yeah. You know, otherwise sure. it, it, it can be, it can be very challenging to have the energy or the, lack of soreness that is, you know, accompanied by some of these workouts too. And I think that's probably a great topic by itself is just what do you do the next sore. day when you're really sore? <laughs> yeah. What does soreness really how, mean? How can you get out of soreness? So <laughs> yeah. That'd be part of this, this little series that we're discussing. Yeah, for sure. Definitely the post one. We might even, the post one might be two series. I don't know. Like we just, yeah, could be. it's not that we're winging this sort of thing, but you understand that these, these, principles that we have that we go by they're not like i mean we could say drink lots of water but what does that mean you know we can't just throw out blanket statements and that's why we're having these long-term discussions because you, we try to get you guys to realize that it's not it's typically not just here's your answer usually there's some discovery that reveals an answer not always the answer but it, 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 it uncovers an answer that to works for the you next one maybe yeah an answer that works for you. Yes. You know, because yep. some things I'm saying right here, you may not work for you. You right. may not like burpees. We'll may get into that. You like, may have a bad wrist that you can't do burpees. You know, like, so. I'm not a responder to, to, like, for example, like kind of prefacing a little bit. I'm not much of a responder to dry needling. But some people, they are. So it's like, you, I didn't know that until I tried it. And, and yep. it just, now I'm willing to try it again because, Right. It doesn't mean one time. It's not enough data points for me to go, oh, I'm going to throw it out the window. Yeah. That's another post-workout activity we can discuss too. And that's what all we're going to do. That's I just, the, yeah. All the different things from massage to dry needling, uh, acupuncture. We'll, yeah. we'll discuss well, all everything. the benefits. That's why the, the third series or the third video might be end up being two videos. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. We'll, we'll do the uh, post-workout thing and then we'll break it up. So anyway, yeah. you guys are like, stick around. We'll uh, do another uh, podcast here in the next day or two, and we'll we'll answer you know some of these questions that you're having about what can I do during the workout, what can I do after the workout to help me prevent some injuries, recover for the next workout, and just be overall get a better workout out of the deal. So for sure, there you go. Right, All right, I appreciate it, Jeff. Thank you. We'll see you.